Hello, it's been Happy American Nation. Kim Petrus. She's just dropped the album that was shelved that was replaced with Feed the Beast. Now, Problematique, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's got the little accent. It's that French driven little themed album. I'm presuming from the beret, and you know, she's got some few Frenchy songs in here. This should really be a lot more cohesive because this was the album that was meant to be the debut. However, Feed the Beast was the debut, so I'm going to guess this is her sophomore album. Wild that it just got released, no promo, nothing. So maybe they just wanted to get it out there, hit some streams or something. I don't know. I'm very keen to hear what it sounds like. Conceptually. It's got Paris Hilton on it, very keen for that one. And I guess, yeah, there's nothing else to really say. We don't really know what to, well, I don't know what to expect. I know a lot of these songs leaked, so I know a lot of you have heard them, and now you can, I guess, stream them and support Kim in that sense. Well, and Castle, they are on Patreon, links are down below. Other than that, let's get straight into Kim's new album, Problematic. That's the opening song as well. <laughs> let's go. It's gonna be a fun little summer bar. Nice little tid a bit, three minutes song, they're all three minutes actually, so super short album in general. Easy, I didn't expect the chorus just to be like getting up off your feet, I thought I guess she'd probably go in more, I guess, into any scandals or any media, I guess, hate on her. A little bit in there, I just think the song would have been cooler if it did go down that route. However, it still was just like, get up off your feet, like so easy to bop to, so yeah, definitely like a little summer banger ranger. Definitely the TikTokers are gonna love that, like the plastic, I'm a dramatic, all that stuff. So you can definitely see it's virally, vir virally, virally -ness of it all. <laughs> And I guess if that is the title track, it's going to set the scene. It's all just going to be fun, that little happy Bobby songs, which I guess if you're expecting that, you're going to have fun. If you're not, you're not. So we shall see what we get. The next song is Je T'adore. Let's go. Oh, that's that kind of sound I love from her. they are. Album cover just looking at it, it looks, I mean it's obviously very striking, very stunning, snatched to the gods. I mean the problematic fonting is just covering it, it's pretty insane. Yeah that contrast, say once it got rid of that weird little, I don't know, almost like a rap kind of sound and it went back to just that underneath some of the verses, sounded so much stronger. A nice song, again it's all very like easy, very cliche lyrics, like nothing super deep and I know you don't have to be, I know artists still put as much effort into some of these songs as artists that you know are lyrically a lot stronger. I guess my opinion of Kim, like generally as each album's gone on, I guess I've fallen more out of wanting to listen to the albums conceptually as a whole. Turn Off The Lights will forever be one of the best things she's ever done. I just hate that she, I guess she sold out in terms of like signing to a label and things like that, but you had to if you want to, you know, progress in life. And that is the reality of it. So I just really hate that that happened because that was, yeah, some of the best stuff. So while this is still nice and easy, it doesn't hit me. It doesn't like grab me. I know we're only two songs in, we may get there. However, it's just, that's my thoughts right now. Next song that I'm very keen for, All She Wants featuring Paris Hilton. Let's go.
It's so close to being a sample out, like that. Da -da. Cool. I don't know, it's very expected of what a Paris and Kim song would be, so I guess in that sense there's nothing like, you know, groundbreaking, however, still super fun. I love like the depth of that. I'm gonna presume it's almost like a song about Paris, and you know, that's what she gets, and then there's this underlying person behind the Paris character, which we know, but just showing that it's, yes, it's all glitz and glams, but that doesn't mean you're happy and things like that. Like I said, there wasn't much depth before, and I'm like, oh, I like that little depth chucked in there. Love Paris saying icons only, love her saying that's hot, I mean, that's just quintessential. For Kim, especially, this would be such a, I guess, big moment because I'm sure growing up she would watch The Simple Life and all that stuff. So while the Y2K in early 2000s is super resurgent now, I guess for her, yeah, it would be pretty special. So I love that for her. Easy song, like I said, definitely you could get that on a workout. It's just like high intensity and just, yeah. Having some fun. What's funny as well is that that song was actually nearly four minutes, one of the longest songs on the album. So some songs gonna get cut for that, but Paris was like, I need at least a minute of my own vocals on this track. Next song's Born Again, let's go. <laughs> favorite so far easy like I said they're all gonna be easy songs they're all gonna be just ones you can bop to whether or not you connect with them is another thing so yeah not a bad song would I race back and listen to it no I think as well coming after all she wants which was a bit more of a bop and you know I guess connected with me more that song had a harder time I guess living up to that because I was like oh we are actually getting a bit of substance let me go back to this just like I don't know easy listening next song something about you let's go <laughs> Like lyrically deeper, per se. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I like that one. That was, yeah, like I said, just so different to what we've heard. I guess a bit more like, I don't know, I just, a bit more darker toned, I suppose, which I love. Vocal delivery and the, I guess the lyrics getting a bit more in there, a bit more like personal and I suppose a bit more vulnerable. I love the, I don't know, I don't care what your effing sign is. I'm like, <laughs> Just still the comedic value in there, which, you know, we're so used to her by now. Number 16, if I run about is the best song on the album. Let's find out. It's called Treat Me Like a Ho. So we've already been treated like a SLUT before, so now we're going to treat like a ho. Let's see what she's got for us. Let's go.
only like a slut pot why? <laughs> I mean, it's classic. I am actually over the Gucci Prada. I'm like, the amount of times she says it in her songs, it's just like, we get it, yo, we get it. However, removing that funny, classic Kim, just easy, fun pop. Like I said, that definitely doesn't fit on the album per se. I guess it does because she's problematic, but that definitely is a cut, I think, from her EP that she released a couple years ago. <laughs> Funny, lol, classic. Next song is Confession. I mean, she confesses most things, so I'm scared as what she's going to confess to us now. Let's go. song a bit more. Easy, nice, cute. I mean, she still spoke about Paris and again, those things. I mean, she's saying now she does need the brands after six songs of her saying she does need them. So interesting. I definitely think the production carries the songs in terms of it's just hooks you in and then you just get used to it and you kind of just like rock out a bit more to that. So I guess I am keen for Kim to do something. I don't know. I don't know. She, I don't know. She's there, but not kind of thing. It's almost like this weird hybrid position for her. And I know a lot of people love her and you know, I got a lot of hate for Feed the Beast because I didn't really vibe with it so much. And I was like, mm, it's all right. This is better, I think, conceptually. Like, this does feel in sync and like it was meant to happen, which I know it was, and Feed the Beast wasn't kind of that vibe, but I don't know. I do, it's almost like there's a bit of a higher expectation because you've heard such great stuff from her, which I know isn't fair to hold someone up to that. It's definitely that sell outy vibe, and I know that's what she loves, and I know that is her as well. I don't know what it is. There's just something that doesn't like super resonate with me with the last few albums or last few projects that I've heard from her. Like S Pop was just so good. And like I said, Treat Me Like a Host should be there. And I guess it's like, is that your vibe? Or is this your vibe? Or is the darkness your vibe? Or is it all your vibe? And I guess there's just variety for everyone. And yeah. You just tune in with what you love. I'm not sure, but the next song's deeper. Let's go. Do you wanna go deeper? Deeper. Yeah, I do actually. This girl on my mess, Mr. Bliss, get it going. Hey. songs are super lovey-dovey which is cute as well I guess if you're in this like little infatuation stage or whatever you can really relate to them and just have some fun and you know just all be cutesy and lovey so I guess that's awesome for people that are going to be able to relate and connect to that I don't think I've ever been that type of person my emotional stuff is more like <laughs> pining for people or like really sad depressive songs however I still love to have fun I still love classic pop and I guess this is just easy easy listening like there's nothing else to really talk about it I mean there isn't for me I mean I'm sure a lot of other people could probably dissect it a bit more and I'm just like yeah nice Easy, let's move on. Next song's Dirty Things. Let's go. Ooh, weird little sound in there. Love someone cute, you're falling in love, all that etc.ness. We're at the last song. I am very keen to wrap it up. I'm kind of a bit over it now, to be fair. I think it peaked from like one to six. I feel like these last four songs are a bit like 
eh, nothing special. I mean, Born Again probably I put in there as well. I don't know, I think 5 out of 10 I've really vibed with, which is half the album. I think with Kim I'm never going to really vibe an entire album unless it really is just incredibly iconic. Like I said, these ones just aren't super incredible. They're just easy pop song driven albums. Last song's Love You, Olivia. Let's go. Hey. Yeah, we haven't had any French stuff really. Well, except the first two songs. <laughs> in terms of lyrical content not like the brands and all that crap it actually was like I know again it's still basic lyric telling but it was just nicer and I think again the production played a part of that of like you no know, it wasn't the same although that like do, 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 where it like pulls away and comes back so generic at this point in terms of music in general but she does it a lot on this album right problematic je t'adore all she wants something about you trip like a hoe love you leave six out of ten pretty decent like I said if you love this type of music you are going to absolutely love this album while I do I think in terms of an entire album of it it doesn't interest me it doesn't like excite me per se I guess it's going to be really really like either super tongue in cheek just super outrageous or super experimental into production for it just to, I guess, last. It, for me, it just kind of, it gets flat. Like I was excited and I was like, Ugh, okay, like we have heard all this before. And in terms of her own stuff, we have heard it quite a bit. I know this was meant to come up before Feed the Beast. So I guess in terms of that, we've had how many songs? Like 20 songs from her in the last couple of months, which has some standouts, but overall, I'd probably class them all quite similar. This album though, I think is stronger than Feed the Beast in terms of thematicness and cohesivity. It feels like it should all be one album. And I know the difference in terms of how they were released and things like that. However, you still got to comment on it because that is a comparison of the two albums. I think Feed the Beast, even though I really didn't like the album overall, it had some of the best songs I've heard by her if I was going to compare the two. These ones, the ones I loved were sick, but again, I don't think I'm going to race back and listen to this album, whereas Feed the Beast, there are some songs on there that I absolutely do listen to still. I don't know what it is. There's something just, I can't put my finger on it. I want to like her and then I hear this and I'm like, it's nice, it's easy and yes, sweet, but anyone could do this album, right? What do you guys think? Let me know down below. I know a lot of you aren't going to be happy that it didn't love it totally but I think six out of ten is pretty decent do you guys feel the same I mean it's definitely label controlling and things like that so I feel bad that she can't really do what she wants to do but I guess you kind of sign up for that now in today's world we know what the music industry is like you know what contracts are like you know they're going to control you rip away your artistic integrity but I guess if you want to progress in life you've got to weigh out which one you want to give up I suppose but like us as always we're on Patreon links are down below if you want to go check out my other Kim videos you can go do that they're all on the channel other than that I'm going to go